Hi, today I'm going to show you how to work with variegated threads if this is your first time. Uh, so thank you for joining me. Um, I'm using Needle Necessities number 1931. It does not exist anymore. There's a new company called Threadworks with an X um, and it's called Bradley's Balloons if you want the same threads that I'm using, fibers. Um, I had three skeins of this. I've had it for about 15 years and I found this beautiful unicorn project and I decided that this is what I wanted to use it for. Um, so to use it, I'm separating it. These are come pre-cut. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to pull apart the parts I'm going to use. Um, now variegated thread is, doesn't always have the same at both ends. Uh, at this one, I have yellow at one end and green at the other. So I always start with my green. There's not a right and wrong when it comes to that. I just like to always start with my green. Um, you'll create a very cool pattern and I'm going to show you what I've been working with. Um, so how I chose this pattern was all black and white. All these spots were black um, because you get to pick whatever color you want. So if you don't want to do a variegated thread, you can use DMC and say, for this patch, I want this color, another patch, I want that color. You can create whatever pattern you want. Um, some people will do end to end. So like I said, I just ended and I'm going to start with green. Well, if somebody stopped with yellow, they might start with the yellow. Um, if you want to come around, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to start by showing you how to hide your threads in the back. Cause there are some people who've asked, how do you hide your threads? So I left my needle on. So I just slipped it through the stitches that I had just completed. I do have a nice needle minder there. Magnet. Get rid of my ends here. And then I'm going to go ahead and thread, thread my needle. Yes, I still do the old lady way of licking my needle, my threads. I saw on Facebook where somebody said, I wonder how much spit from my project. I'm like, I don't want to know. So there are two ways to start this. Um, you can, how I just ended, you can slide through one of your previous stitches. That's a little bit easier. So I'm going to show you the other way. So I'm going to hold my, I don't want it to go all the way through. You see, I left a little tiny tail. I'm going to stitch an X right over top of it. So when we use variegated threads, we do not stitch the traditional right legs going straight over and then coming back with the left leg. Sorry, I'm trying to get around this. No, my thumb's in the way. There we go. And then, uh, so with this, we make full X's. That's how you get the beautiful pattern. You may not think my pattern's beautiful. I do. Um, and it's fun. And you can see I just made a mistake because I let that go through. So I'll just pull that back out. I stitched through my leg and that, I've done that before. So we're going to make sure that we stay on the outside part of that. Kind of glad I showed you that. Because when, we, and yes, I do. I flip over and over and over again. And that's how I know I am on the outside part of this. Do I do this in a scroll frame when I'm using my Lowry? Absolutely not. That would be a lot of trouble. So there is a front loop start. There are lots of people out there with videos of front loop starts. Um, that's how I learned. So yes, yeah, so you can teach an old dog new tricks. Um, and I'm really glad that I did learn how to do that. I just find it's not 100% effective and I usually have to start it once or twice, which is okay. This will be the last one because I know that I am now fully covered. So I'm done flipping which again is kind of easy to do when you're using a Q-snap. All right, so I'm getting to the end of my row. Hopefully my daughter is not going to get my pattern in this as I look to see where my next row goes. Straight down. So we go left to right and then right to left. So I'm gonna come back and finish that stitch. And then I'm going to go down right under it because that's what my pattern says. Now I can drag. I don't try to drag more than one or two stitches. So like I finished this first and then had to go up to here. So I slid my thread underneath and that was over only one stitch. So I didn't mind doing that. Um, like I ended here, slid up and went down here. Um, some of the easier ones would be like, I'm trying to see the one where I dropped right below it. Like right here, I ended here or here maybe. And then I just started the right one. 
so you can see my back here. I kind of keep them separate, but every once in a while you pull one into another, or you go under it. Try why is why do I keep it, try to drag under? It keeps your back neat. It's easy to find your stitches if you have to take something out. You don't have to worry about tangled threads. Uh, the other reason is it's not puffy. Why do I not drag more than one or two stitches? With white, you can definitely see when you have threads laid behind it. So I don't want a bunch of knots. Um, so I am particular. I don't sit there and go, oh, is my neck back neat? No, I just wanna make sure that my threads are all in the right place. And you can just see, I didn't do anything special when I did this, but my threads are laying nicely and neatly. Um, I do hide as best as I can, uh, keep my stitches even. If I feel a knot, I'll turn it over and I fix the knot before pulling through. Um, it also makes it nice when you go to frame it, so you don't have to worry about puffy spots. Um, so I hope this video was helpful to you.